Hey everyone, it's the interview queen Alicia Toot here and I am so psyched for today's guests. They are co-hosts on Busted Open Radio on Sirius XM and I've been on their show so it is about time they come on mine. Everybody, it is Dave LaGreca and Mark Henry. Hi you two. How's it going on? Hi, how are you both doing? I always make the comment but I love the rock and roll background. Thank you, thank you. I try to spruce it up a little bit, you know? (laughs) I have to say it's about time. I mean, Mark and I have been talking for months about when you're finally going to make the call and you did. So uh, we're psyched to be on today. We made it, Dave. Yeah, we made This is what you we made it. We the made big it. Time. <laughs> 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 oh, well, whenever I'm watching Busted Open, or I've literally been on the show with you. Your chemistry is truly undeniable. So I really would like to go to the beginning, to that uh, very first meeting. And what were your first impressions of one another when you first met? Well, do you want to start, Mark, or should I? Well, I guess I probably should start being that I'm the one that kind of initiated it. I, uh, I was a fan of busted open and you know i called in uh when the show first started and i i listened and i love the fact that dave and doug talked about pro wrestling in an honorable way like they they weren't like a dirt sheet and i saw dave in uh for the first time in dallas uh when i was getting ready to you know, I was thinking about retiring and I was like, damn, this is Dave McGregor. And uh, one of the guys there that, uh, yeah, man, he's pretty cool, man. And um, I, I walked over and introduced myself and, and I was like, can I talk to you for a minute? And he was like, yeah, whatever, like whenever. I was like, well, right now I'm, I'm not doing nothing. And we went and sat down in the lobby of the hotel and just started talking. And I told him, I said, man, I really love how y'all produce y'all show. I love the content. I was like, and I was a, um, a radio guy in college and wanted to, um, wanted, I, I think about retiring and that's when I, I want to do radio. And he was like, listen, man, I would love to have you come on the show and we could talk about this and, and Dave is the one that connected me with everybody. And he was the one that co-signed for me. And uh, here we are. So and, a pretty impressive um, and happy first impression. <laughs> you know, I, I, I asked for a job the first right. time I met him. And, and listen, I get a lot of people that ask to be a part of the show. I'm very, very lucky in that way. But Mark's right. That, that day in Dallas, in the, in the lobby of the hotel, and it was just before the Hall of Fame inductions, and Mark and I sat for hours just, just BSing. And, um, and that showed you right off the bat that there was a connection and there was a chemistry. So I knew once he made that decision that, you know, he was done with wrestling, that it would be an easy transition for him to move over to radio. It makes perfect sense because if you can really BS for that long without a camera rolling, all you need is for that audio, <laughs> that red button to start beeping, and you know you've got something good. <laughs> and we, and, and I found and we out could that he was, a, he was a cowboy fan too that day, and we we probably talked for probably the first uh, thirty minutes of the conversation about the cowboys and like you know just the history and so forth. So it, it was it was a real good first meeting. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. I feel like one of the best parts of having your own show, aside from being co-host and getting on with them fairly well, is the fact that you do get to speak with all walks of life and make friends along the way. So for you too, would you say you prefer being the interviewers or the interviewees? Oh, geez. I mean, ooh, I mean, for Mark, you've been you've been interviewed a heck of a lot more than I have, but I I kind of like expressing myself in that way where, you know, especially sitting with somebody like you, like where you ask really good questions. I kind of like showing that side of myself because I know Mark, I, I, I can't do that on a daily basis. So I, I kind of like these, you know, interviews with you and kind of showing a different side than I usually do on Busted Open on a daily basis. Right. How about I think uh, uh, I feel the same way. I, I, I'd rather be interviewed than have to interview. Um, 
but like I'm, I was curious when I met you in Canada, uh, what made a young girl love wrestling like that? And uh, your response to me was, why not? Like wrestling is like the coolest thing. And, yeah. and I said to myself, you know what? Wrestling is the coolest thing. And it ended up being like a really good first meeting. And I knew that you were gonna be successful uh, by the fact that you respected what you were doing. And um, if you respect and love something, it's not work. It's like you just, you're one of the people that's given the report to everybody that can't be there. And um, I mean, you, you're doing an awesome job and I, I appreciate you. you having us on your show. Oh, thank you so much for the kind words. I'll never forget how much we just bonded over food and donuts and the rest is history. <laughs> now we're here especially today. The donuts, especially the donuts. Always. Oh my goodness. It's so interesting hearing that you two prefer being interviewed because for me, I personally love being in the driver's seat. I love controlling the conversation, kind of knowing what's being thrown my way. So when it comes to both of you being in that seat, if you could kind of pick the brains of anyone to have on Busted Open, a musician, wrestler, just a celebrity in general, uh, who would kind of that be? Is there someone still on that hit list? That's a really good question because I go back to a project I had to do my freshman year in high school. And I had to, if, and, and the project was, if you were having a dinner, who would be the five people that you would want at that dinner? I remember and doing those I, in school. I, I think everybody, <laughs> and... I have been lucky enough to interview, you know, all those people in that project. Like I've been able to interview a Ric Flair. I've been able to interview uh, a Gene Simmons from Kiss. I've been able to interview Alice Cooper. I, you know, I, I've, I've interviewed all these people that like, that I bought a ticket to see, or yeah, you know, yeah, I, it's, it's crazy when you think about that. I'm sure you think about that as well. Like people that you used to look up to, that seemed like, oh, there's no chance that I would ever be able to meet them. And then they're coming on your show and you're interviewing them. But like it, I've been very, very lucky. There really isn't that one person that I haven't been able to interview. I've, I've, I've kind of completed that bucket list. That's but that's not to say as time goes by, there might be other people because that's the great thing of being on a show that's a daily show is that kind of changes your your wish list kind of changes through time there's those people you want to interview that you know you're just a big fan of so you have all these questions that you want yeah. to ask like right. i'm a big a big alice cooper fan so the first time we had him on i had all these questions in my head that i wanted to ask him but then there's those difficult interviews right there's things that and i do this as well like there's times on the show i kind of put my foot in my mouth but then you know, you're going to have that guest on where you kind of have to, you know, bring those things up. And I remember, and again, this is always taken out of context, but there, the WWE had a DVD, this is years ago, of the top 50 performers in WWE history. And number one was Shawn Michaels. So I went on the show and I'm like, Shawn Michaels, number one, like Ric Flair's number one, it's not Shawn Michaels. And I said, and I, I made this statement. I said, Shawn Michaels, number one, he's so overrated because I didn't look at him as number one. Right. Well, then the fans go crazy. What does my producer do? Mike Riker at the time, he books Shawn Michaels for the show. So now after I make that statement, I now have to bring that up to him. Right. I have to. I got Shawn Michaels, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. And I now have to say to him, it's overrated. That I, <laughs> Yeah, I, that he was overrated. He was like, what? And I remember it. He goes, well, who do you think is number one? I said, Ric Flair. And he goes, just so you know, at, when I was in the ring with him at WrestleMania 24, he listened to me. So just <laughs> remember that. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, you listen. I was like, okay, Mr. Michaels, oh I digress. Point, point taken, yes. point gotten. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Well, that really is the beauty of it, though. You never know what's going to happen. Sometimes you do say things and you have to almost back them up. And that that's quality entertainment, though. You know, it comes with the job. And I was doing some research and watching a few older videos of you guys. And there was one from three years ago where you two were just dancing to Drake. And it's 
pretty damn amazing. So what would you say um, out of the two of you, which would you say is actually the better dancer? Me. Yeah, it's Mark. Oh, okay. No confrontation whatsoever. It's, it's, it's Mark. And 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 I, I think that video shows that Mark's a better dancer. Um, just, you know, just better footwork than I do. But also, Mark, like about a year ago, we did a chair dance competition where, you know, you're dancing in your chair. And I thought I had an advantage. And obviously, he proved me wrong on that as well. So by far, Mark is the best dancer. And, and Alicia, if you look over Dave's right shoulder, uh, there's a title up there that I was supposed to get that I never got. And I'm still, I'm still waiting. And Dave is like, "No, I want to hand it to you in person." Oh, sure, no. he does. I do. Uh, I want to, I want to hand it to him UPS, in person. Like ground, you can ship it ground if you want to. Don't <laughs> spend FedEx, a lot of money. UPS, you can go through Pure Later. <laughs> that's anything. A, just send it. That's a pure gold belt. That weighs a lot. You know how much the shipping and handling would be on that title belt, Mark. I, wouldn't it mean so much more if I was just to hand you if he that, it up on you? <laughs> yeah, I'll put yeah, I'll strap it around your waist. Alicia, can I bring on a special guest on your show? Yeah, go for it. Jacob, <laughs> come here. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> woo. And he had to give a Ric Flair whoop. Come here, I'm on the show right now Bust on Alicia Toot Show. Oh, the Alicia Toot Show. Yeah, and oh. and 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 oh. check this out. Dave oh Dave has the title on his shelf, and he still haven't given me the title. What what did you have to say about that? I told them that they need to send it. And then like, what's his name? Conrad, the mort mortgage guy. He was like, I he wrote like a whole paragraph essay on why he won the title and blah 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 i told him i was gonna beat him up next time i see him if he don't give him the title <laughs> well, like but dave has it i, know I have it. it but jacob see? jacob it's brings up a good right point there. dave i'm coming but, for you okay right uh oh it's right there but jacob you bring up a good point conrad thompson suing me for that because of legal ramifications i cannot give it to mark at this time that's oh. sick isn't that that's convenient? Convenient. it is Blame Conrad. All right, Blame thank you. you. Great, great, great appearance. Now beat it. Thank <laughs> <laughs> up, everyone. <laughs> well, only, I, only on your show. Only on your only, show. Only on I your go show. with the flow, guys. It's what I'm all about. Well, one thing uh, we had briefly mentioned before was how food somehow always comes up in conversation when I speak with you too. So be honest, Dave, how often does Mark actually talk about donuts or awesome foods? Is it just when I'm around or is that like some mutual ground for you two? You're just talking now, about some good grub. Absolutely. Every analogy that Mark brings up on the air centers around food. And every single conversation comes back to food. He has a one track mind and it's definitely food without a doubt. And I, and I, I'll say this every time I could have a full blown breakfast, which I do before every single show at Mark 30 minutes in, I'm hungry again. And I cannot <laughs> wait until the show is over so I can eat. And that is because of Mark's conversation pieces each and every time he's on the air. And the fact that I like to describe the food. Yes, right. very detailed. And I go into great detail of saying, yeah, yeah, when you make cabbage, you have to you have to fry bacon in the bottom of the pan yes. and uh, use chicken stock. And, you know, you only need one or two cups and, you know, season it to your liking and use kielbasa sausage inside as the protein because yep. it gives a good sweet meaty flavor to like and Dave is like listen man like I already ate but it's, I'm hungry again it, where's your cooking it's show kind of down there. It's, it's coming is it it's is coming. That... actually like uh, I'm working on a show now uh called barbecue smoke slam which I think the name is about to change but we've pushed it back like three months now because of COVID and uh, I'm I'm really excited about it. I'm I'm waiting on it to happen, but you know this COVID thing has got to go away in order for me to travel and be around people to do this show. Well, whenever the time comes, I'll be watching barbecue. Mark Henry, you can't go wrong. It's a good combo. 
Now, we've briefly talked music together, especially uh, sharing our love of being a part of the KISS Army. So I was curious, what is the first concert either of you ever went to? What was the first concert? Yeah, first show. Clearly well, very, I, I very went and saw, um, my first one was Bell Biv DeVoe. Wow. Okay. They played at the Ford Arena in Beaumont, Texas. And it was in the 90s. Like, I, I came home from, from college, and a friend of mine said, hey, you know, Bell Bill DeVoe is in Beaumont tonight. And I was like, no, I didn't. And we went, and I had the time of my life. And uh, I never thought that during that time that I would enjoy myself being around that many people um but the, that's the thing about concerts there was no arguments there was no fighting right. it was just like everybody was just anxious and excited to see the acts come out on the stage and i i didn't think that i was a concert guy i'd never been to one but like i became a concert guy that day and um you know, that was that was like, you know, my best moment, I think, for concerts. There have been many since then, but the first one was the best one. Just hearing you describe it makes me miss it so much. The moment oh. the lights dim, the way that the crowd just freaks out. It's the same with wrestling shows. I just, oh, my heart just, it aches a little bit. <laughs> well, everybody's on the same team for a concert because, you know, you're yes. all there. You know, it's not like going to a football game where you have opposing fans or, you know, wrestling or something like that. It's, you know, when you go to a concert, everybody's there to see that band. Everyone's there to see that performer. And speaking of music, and I think you'll appreciate this. This is from a good friend of ours, Scott in Long Island, that made this Kiss Dynasty you picture. You showed me that last time I was on Busted Open. It's awesome. And it's uh, me as Paul Stanley, Bully as Gene Simmons, Tommy Dreamer as Peter Chris, and then, of course, our very own Mark Henry as Ace Freely. So I love it. I figured your viewers might like to see that. I, I got to be greatly. Ace. I know. Yeah, you got to be Ace. I'm so, but I'm the star child. I'm Paul Stanley. <laughs> That's incredible. Well, the last thing I want to ask you both about just speaking to music is if you could have one artist write a theme song for Busted Open Radio. Who would you love to see do so? Oh, I know for me, it's Nita Strauss, the guitarist for Alice That's Cooper. Awesome. And she has an amazing solo album out as well. Um, she did the theme for Nakamura at WrestleMania. She also performed at Evolution. I think, Mark, I would love Nita to do uh, the Busted Open theme. Actually, we should make that happen. We should call yeah. Nita and ask her to do the Reach theme. Reach out. For what are you thinking? How do we not I'm think so that glad before? that you said Nita Strauss and not... Um, uh, the guy uh, Pitbull that you y'all tried to force that song on me the other day, like it was it was Not such a, a bad. Oh, Fireball! Oh, that's a great song, Fireball. You don't like that song? It sounds no, awesome. It doesn't move me. I, I like. I, I listen. Let's. I, I vote for Nita Strauss. Okay, Nita. We'll do that. We'll make it happen. Do now. I expect it, guys. I'm holding you to it. <laughs> well, I really want to say thank you so, so much for taking the time for hopping on here. It's been so lovely catching up. I'm so happy to see you're both doing well and healthy and safe. And as always, it's a blast. So thank you a ton. Thank you. Thank you for having us on. About time, Mark. We've only been waiting. We made it, Dave. So much. No, we, Ridiculous. You know what? We started at the bottom. Now we're here to quote a famous <laughs> Toronto's Uh, rap artist Drake. Toronto's um, very own. We made it. We made it. We started from the bottom. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. Dave, Mark, thank you so, so much for taking the time. To everyone watching, be sure to check out aliciatoot.com for more exclusive interviews and features and check these two out on Busted Open Radio. Bye, everybody.